Welcome back folks for our second in this little mini series of shooting with old film cameras. Today we have a classic rangefinder camera, one that is from the family of the most probably popular rangefinders in the vintage realm that are currently on the market and sought out by collectors. This guy is however the much cheaper earlier version. This is the Contax G1. Now you've probably heard of the G2, it's a grail for so many people, but this is so much cheaper. Came out just two years earlier in 1994. Uh, it's got very similar build quality and ergonomics. It's got three or four great lens options. We've got the 45mm f2 and the 90mm f2.8 to shoot with. It doesn't have as sophisticated an autofocus system. There's a couple of other features that the G2 has over it. But in terms of value for money, the G1 is really fantastic. Now, thanks again to Panda Camera for loaning us this one. They've also given us three different rolls of film to test out through this video. They aren't sponsoring this video, though. I'm going to give you my full thoughts on it. But this unit is in absolutely pristine condition, though. So let me put it in a leather case so we don't get any scratches on it and then go do some shooting. Don't forget to check out the sample files, folks. The link is in the description below. And whilst you're over at learn.macranger.com, you can check out my brand new Photographer's Guide to Iceland. Welcome. 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 Welcome to Iceland. Steph and I show you around all of my favorite photography destinations, showing you the best time of day to visit, what equipment you're going to need, the different options you have at different seasons through the year. The course includes five hours of 4K content, as well as a comprehensive guidebook available as a PDF or ebook that you can take along to prepare your perfect travel photography adventure. Check it out, details are in the description below. There's so many people online have said the autofocus on this is terrible. It seems fine for a camera of its age. It's, you know, pulling focus, it seems to be fine. Although with the rangefinder design, it's kind of, I'm trusting it. So I guess we'll see when I get the shots back if they're actually in focus. But the experience of shooting it so far, it's enjoyable, it's quick. Uh, the way that the grid lines show you what it is you're actually getting is really interesting and easy to see. I like it. I don't know that I'd buy one, but I enjoy shooting with it. Oh, the analog joy and mystery of film, getting to see your shots a week after you took them, only to find out that a lot of them are out of focus and that you don't really like the film stock. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of these shots. You can download samples of them yourself below in the description. Beautiful. Just waiting for a weird guy behind you. Now let's get a little funny one here. Now you stay still, I'm <laughs> it's like, and then she's straight up the wall. I'm gonna just do a little something silly here. You stay still nice and still. You can lean on the wall, it's fine. Next up, whilst the weather's nice, Hong Kong is a great place to go hiking. I went for a hike from Mui Wo over to Discovery Bay with Honey. It's a fairly steep climb, but some beautiful lookouts along the way and lots of beautiful nature that you can step out into for portraits as well. There's a famous church along the way, kind of a monastery actually. I thought it was quite funny that they've replaced the holy water with hand sanitizer, very 2023. And here's a selection of the different images we made on the contacts that day. 
Now, all of the color shots you're seeing in this video were on Ektar 100 film and the black and white was Acros 100. So we've done a bunch of shooting with the contact so far and overall I really am enjoying shooting with it. Now I appreciate this would be a more useful review if I was comparing it to the G2 because I know a lot of people are but looking at it in isolation not you know comparing the improved autofocus and stuff I could definitely recommend it to people especially being a much more reasonably priced entrance into what's really a premium point and shoot film camera. We've got a couple more hours with it, well, actually one. So we're just gonna wander around some back alleys, get some kind of street photos, see what we find before I return it to Panda camera. Exact pricing on these cameras depends on the market at the time. So check them out directly if you wanna see this or any other film cameras. And after this, we'll go in studio and take a look at the images and see if the autofocus has actually been reliable. Now, I've only had the two lenses for this shooting. I haven't missed much, but there's certainly been times where I'd like to get wider. You, there's, I think, five or six different lenses that are compatible with this guy, and there is some wider ones in there. So have a think about the lens range before committing to the system. Just took a shot of a guy who then ran away because he probably shouldn't be drinking beer at 4.30 in the afternoon. Makes me feel like I'm a private detective in like a 1950s film with a film camera. It's like Chinatown or something. Anyone? Old movie buffs, anyone? Yeah. Yeah, you get it. If you get a chance to stop by Hong Kong, do call into Panda Camera, as well as being a Hasselblad dealer, which is how I first met Boris. They have an amazing range of collectible film cameras and maybe the broadest range of different film stocks I've seen anywhere in the world. Of course, they do ship online as well, so you can check out their link. It's in the description below. So it's a little while after filming now. I'm back in studio. I've been through all of the images and to be honest, I think I covered everything already, but I said we'd do a wrap up in studio. So let's recap the photos I took and just summarize my feelings. It is a really enjoyable camera to shoot with. The build quality is beautiful. The ergonomic and tactile feeling of shooting it is enjoyable. However, I did miss focus on a lot, sometimes just missing, you know, missing the eye and getting the nose or the ear, other times just completely in the background. And with a rangefinder, it's really hard to tell, to be honest. I'm sure with more experience shooting, my hit rate would go up. Having said that, I can see maybe why the G2 is so popular. The later generation is meant to have much better autofocus. One big thing, obviously, the film stock makes a huge impact on the final look of the images and it will come down to your taste if the films that we were using on the day are actually something that you enjoy and like the look of. We've now looked at some of the Nikon T28 range and T35 type cameras and this guy, uh, Boris at Panda has told me basically anything they have in stock, as long as it's not super rare, we're able to loan and test out. So if there's some other film cameras you'd like to see me try out, put a roll or two of film through, leave it as a comment below. If you are a contact shooter, leave us your experience and maybe any tips on improving the autofocus uh, success rate. And if you head on over to learn.mattgranger.com, you can check out the sample files from today and you can also sign up to the mailing list and get a free copy of my guide to improving your portraiture. 
Cheers, guys. I'll see you soon with more film content.